Welcome to my hometown of Limassol, the island's capital of wine, commerce and tourism, peppered with attractions both modern and historical. This is the thriving hub of the south coast, gazing across a short distance of sea miles to North Africa and with an easy sailing distance to all points in the eastern Mediterranean. 16 kilometers, give or take a little. That's the length of this colorful stretch of seafront promenade decorating the southern edge of Limassol. Follow this long straight stretch of road for a few kilometers and you'll see the full seafront range of holiday interest plus evidence of a very popular local feature. There's actually a huge coffee culture here in Limassol and it is definitely one of the things I love about the place. Tourists hit the coffee shops after a long day at the beach, maybe just before sunset. And then all the locals tend to gather there as well, just after work, during the weekdays or throughout the afternoon on a weekend. And the great thing about it is that it doesn't matter what time of the year it is, the coffee shops are always open and it really does add to the buzz of the city. At the end of this popular stretch of seafront, the fabulous and opulent marina of St. Raphael, which offers an insight into the lifestyle of those living here or holidaying in and around Limassol. Go the other way and you'll end up at the Old Harbour. Just across from it is Limassol Castle, built on the site, made famous by a very famous visitor from England. It was here that Richard I, the Lionheart, married his queen Berengaria of Navarre before going on to claim the island in 1191. The 14th century fort, built on the site of an earlier castle, now houses a medieval museum. It's one of a series of museums and historical sites littered around the Limassol area. It's very useful for the pupils at the many international schools following the British education system here in Limassol as they supplement their schoolwork with field trips alongside the many history-minded tourists I spent the best five years of my life at this school and I came here today to catch up on my reading. It's an old dodge from my days. Back to even older times now and a site with an enduring link between past and present. Colossi Castle is one of the most important forts of medieval Cyprus and was the headquarters or commandery for the Crusader Knights of St John. They even gave that name to the rich dessert wine still produced to this day, Comandaria, the oldest continuously produced wine in the world and still made from local vineyards. In fact, Cyprus wine has another claim to fame. 
Recent discoveries show that wine was made here long before anywhere else in the region, some 5,500 years before Christ. That long history is traced at the nearby Wine Museum of Edimi, which also gives visitors the chance to savour some of today's many offerings from this winemaking area. Or try them out as you go on a tour of this gastronomically rich area in one of the many local tavernas offering local specialities. As well as all those lovely local village tavernas, there's also a huge choice of local and international cuisine here in the town itself. I'm good, thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. And you're guaranteed a welcome as warm as the weather. With that long stretch of coastline, there are inevitably a number of different beaches to choose from, with a range of water sports often organised in conjunction with the hotels. Here's a taste of what the coastline has to offer, sun and fun seekers. As you can see, that long coastline offers plenty of choice when you're looking for a beach. The best known being Ladies Mile, which actually runs close to four miles in length, while on the opposite side of town lies Governor's Beach, which is also popular with tourists and residents alike. It's also well supplied with tavernas. Straddling the city of Limassol are two ancient city kingdoms, Amethyst to the east, with remains from Roman, Arabic and Christian periods, and Curian to the west of Limassol, where the restored amphitheatre dating back to the second century before Christ is still used today for performances, and as you can see, it's popular with the tourists. A large number of visitors also choose to take advantage of Limassol's port, where alongside the commercial activities is a major cruise operation. Tourists and visitors alike relish in the nightlife of a city centre with a reputation for being the party town of Cyprus, with the old city centre also having benefited from some recent renovation. It's a natural draw to those wanting to hear some music, eat more quality food late in the evening, and enjoy the sounds of a city providing what is widely described as the best year-round nightlife in Cyprus. For those, however, preferring a more casual evening's entertainment, there are always other options. Wasn't quite in the mood for a club tonight, so just thought I'd come to a beach cafe for the sunset instead. But to be honest, there are so many things to do in Limassol, and everything's so nearby that who knows? I may just change my mind later.